going on guys? It's been a little bit since I posted. I've been busy traveling. I was all the way in Des Moines with the Maserati. And then recently I was up in Devil's Lake, North Dakota and I'm finally back. And today I kind of want to do a video of the Maserati. I want to do an owner's review of the car itself. I've seen so many videos of people just borrowing the cars and reviewing it. But I thought it would be a little bit better video to review the car after owning it for almost two and a half years. I have owned the Maserati for about two and a half years and when I bought it, it had 40,000 miles on it and that's right now currently at 63,500, give or take somewhere around there. And I have had zero issues with it. The only issue I've had is when I bought it and drove it home after a couple months, the driver front tire actually blew. So I had to go get an alignment on it because the alignment was so bad it ate away at the inner tire of itself and it just ended up blowing. I'm still quite camera shy, so I took the car about eh, about 15 minutes away from my house, kind of close to my work, so I just kind of came down from here to review the car itself. So, got some construction zones over there, bigger companies itself, but as long as we're on this side, the car looks amazing. Got the cornfield in the background, typical Midwestern scenery. I think first what we should talk about is just the look and the presence that this car has on the road. It just looks nothing but amazing. It's got that sleek Italian design to it. The big grille up front and just the long hood gives it such a presence on the road that attracts everybody. They always stare at you as you're driving. They're always smiling. They're just happy to see the car itself. I'm not gonna lie when I say this, the amount of times I've actually almost gotten hit from people just kind of getting up close to it, trying to race me or take pictures and just stare at the car, I've been almost hit a handful of times. Don't get me wrong, it's gonna be nothing like driving an Aventador or a Ferrari or any kind of high-end cool supercar like that with how many times people almost hit those cars but i've had a, quite a few close calls this is a 2013 maserati gran turismo so this is the facelift year i've seen a couple 2012s with this kind of bumper setup itself but from to my knowledge 2013 is when they changed this whole bumper setup so uh previously on the older models there would be a fog light here instead of this big grill and to me, that slight design changes the aggression of the front bumper itself and it just ties into the aggression that the car has without looking just straight up childish or outlandish. The other thing that I know from the non-facelift models is the trunk is flat. Where this one, if you can see, has a slight little kick up to it. Better for aerodynamics and a little bit of downforce to the car. It just flows with the body line itself and it just makes the car look amazing. Personally, I don't think there's any bad angles on this car. You can look at it from any angle and it just looks amazing. You can see the car from either 15 feet away and know what it is. You can see it from 100 feet away and people know what it is. You can see it from any angle and it just looks like that Italian sports car. I don't know which angle of the car I like better. I don't know if I like this one better or if we come up front. I think this might be the money shot here. I think this is the best angle of the car there is. When I bought this car, I didn't want a showroom quality Maserati. I didn't want one that was in pristine condition. I wanted one that had a little bit of wear and tear because I daily this car almost every single day. When I'm not driving the Corvette, I'm driving this car. So I don't feel bad about a little rock chip here or a little rock chip there. I don't feel bad about putting miles on the car. I bought this to enjoy it, and it is the best car that I've ever driven so far. Fit and finish of the car is basically what you would expect. It would be almost perfect. It's all handmade. Body panel gaps are perfect. There's nothing to miss out of line. It's all nice and flowing with each other. Just all works well with the design of the car itself. There's so many faster cars. There's so many things that will beat this car, but don't get me wrong, it is quick. It has 454 horsepower, 384 foot-pounds of torque, but it weighs quite a bit. It weighs about 4,300 pounds. It's more of a, it's a grand touring car. It's not by any means a track car. It's a grand touring car. It's meant to be just driven and having fun. Now to stop the car when it's going ridiculously fast, if you are, it's got six piston Brembo's in the front and I believe they are four piston in the rear. Now, part of what makes Maserati so special is back then, Ferrari helped design and build their engines. So what this has, it has a 4.7 liter Ferrari derived V8. And if I remember correctly, it has an F430 block on it. And it's a dual overhead cam, wet sump system. So instead of a dry sump, it's just got a big oil pan underneath it. And doing my own maintenance on it, this is the fastest car that I've ever seen drain for having almost 10 quarts of oil in it. Now with this being an Italian car with the Ferrari engine, this is probably one of the better sounding cars I've ever driven and heard on the road 
just from owning it. Every time I drive it, it just puts a smile on my face. I'm just happy to drive it and hear that sound. Now I've been talking quite a bit how good this car sounds. Let's go ahead and get some footage of the car taking off and doing a drive-by. Now that we're done talking about the exterior and the performance of the vehicle, let's go ahead and talk about the interior. So if we walk up to the door, one thing that you may not notice is right away is there's actually two buttons to open the door. There's an electronic button, so if you pull that, electronic opens up, or you can just pull the manual one if in case your battery's dead and the car's locked, and it just opens just like that. For being an older car, because it is 10 years old, it has such an elegant interior design itself. Just leather everywhere throughout the car, nice carpeting, big steering wheel which some people actually don't like the steering wheel just because it's ugly and dated i actually like it you got the nice big gas pedal there and then maserati try it on the brake pedal and if we get in the steering wheel is nice and big it's decently thick so it's easy to steer around what i like is just something simple is right here on both sides there's just a little bit of a thumb imprint which makes it a lot more comfortable to drive rather than just kind of wrapping your hand and gripping the steering wheel just nice little thumb placement there paddles themselves are big so you can kind of reach it from wherever you are and they're mounted to the steering column itself so not attached to the steering wheel so if i move the steering wheel i know exactly which side of the, pa the paddles are on so i can just know and grab them from there infotainment center is quite dated it's just what you expect right there i can hook up my phone via bluetooth to it however the only thing i can do to it is call people and it's actually got a nice little phone dial here and i can actually punch in a phone number and hit call and I could talk to someone there or if someone calls me and my phone's connected to it it'll pop up saying who so and so is calling me and i can hit the gr little green answer button and call them or and talk to them cool little feature too is if i hit the menu button on it and go through all the different menu options the trip computer is actually a little picture of a maserati gran turismo itself also on the dash is something simple but also elegant is the clock itself i love the clock it's just really cool to have it's unique and then at night the clock and the gauge cluster itself glows green. Comfortability wise, the seats are amazing. They're super comfy, they're big. They don't quite hug you super much on bolsters, which is kind of nice. Cause you're not getting that squished, like squeezing sensation of you would in another seat that has big bolsters on it for cornering. When I first bought this, I drove it home from Houston. And from Houston to where I live in Minnesota, it was about a 19 and a half hour drive. And the entire time, I wasn't aching, my butt wasn't getting sore, nothing like that. It was just super comfortable to drive and such a smooth driving car itself. While I'm driving and I hit a bumpy patch on the road while sport mode's on, the suspension is super stiff and you can, you're kind of end up bouncing. And if I'm in an area like that and it's bouncing me like crazy and I just hit sport and turn it off, it smooths out instantly. How quickly it'll change from the stiff suspension in sport mode to a nice comfortable cruising suspension is ridiculously quick and kind of cool. It's also technically a two plus two car. So it's got the front passenger seat and actually has seats in the back and the space back there between the front seat and the back seat is quite small. I'm 6'3". I can fit back there, not comfortably at all. The maximum time I'd say I could probably handle back there is probably an hour max before I really get squished and cramped up. Also a really unique thing that comes in the car, it's quite ancient to today's standards, is if the glove box comes factory from this car, is this. This is how you can connect your phone to the infotainment center if you don't have bluetooth when was the last time you've seen this style i had this on my iphone 4 and funny enough this came in the car up until 2018 when maserati changed the whole infotainment center to a touchscreen and installed a backup camera you didn't get any of that until you got the 2018 model i wish there was something special about the key but besides that it just has the maserati logo on itself and a blue key then you got this the lock unlock and trunk button itself there and then just flip it open, insert the key, and start it up. Also, everybody will always comment when they first get in the car and I start it up that the check engine light is on. It does a system check, so the check engine light doesn't shut off until it runs through and checks everything. It usually takes about 20 or so seconds, and then it goes away. Another thing I should mention is the trunk on this car. So you hit the trunk button here, pops open the trunk, and with it being a grand touring car, you expect it to have a decent sized trunk, right? Not really. 
it's quite a small trunk. It's maybe, I don't know, a foot and a half deep and then just the width of the car. And the only thing that's back here is the battery itself underneath this little spot. I'm not the biggest car guru. I don't know every facts and numbers about the cars themselves, but just from owning this for the last two and a half years, just a little bit of my knowledge and wisdom per se on the Gran Turismo itself. And personally, if you're in the market and looking at them, get it. You'll absolutely love it. There's nothing that I can probably find that you will hate about the car. It just drives great. There's no gripes or complaints that I have with the car itself. Would I eventually sell the car? Yeah, I would. Maybe to upgrade to something else. But right now, I don't see this car going anywhere. I just love the car as it is right now. Maybe in the future, I'll add a X-Pipe to it to make the exhaust a little bit more louder, just to have a little bit more fun with it. Um, but hopefully I don't have any issues with it where I will have to get rid of it. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Just a quick little info on an owner's perspective of the Maserati Gran Turismo. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment on what anything else you'd like to see with this car or with my Corvette that I have or just any videos in the future you want to see. And please subscribe. It helps out the channel. It helps you see that you guys enjoy watching the videos themselves. So just like that, this vlog is over. And I'm out.